Chapter 64 The Experience of Enoch Of Enoch, it is written that he lived sixty-five years and begat a son. After that he walked with God three hundred years. During those earlier years, Enoch had loved and feared God and had kept his commandments. But after the birth of his first son, he reached a higher experience. He was drawn into closer relationship with God. As he saw the child's love for its father, its simple trust in his protection, as he felt the deep yearning tenderness of his own heart for that firstborn son, he learned a precious lesson of the wonderful love of God to man in the gift of his Son, and the confidence which the children of God may repose in their heavenly Father. The infinite, unfathomable love of God through Christ became the subject of his meditations day and night. With all the fervor of his soul he sought to reveal that love to the people among whom he dwelt. Enoch's walk with God was not in a trance or a vision, but in all the duties of his daily life. He did not become a hermit, shutting himself entirely from the world, for he had in the world a work to do for God. In the family and in his intercourse with men, as a husband and father, a friend, a citizen, he was the steadfast, unwavering servant of God, his faith waxed stronger, his love became more ardent with the lapse of centuries. To him, prayer was as the breath of the soul. He lived in the atmosphere of heaven. As the scenes of the future were opened to his view, Enoch became a preacher of righteousness, bearing God's message to all who would hear the words of warning. In the land where Cain had sought to flee from the divine presence, the prophet of God made known the wonderful scenes that had passed before his vision. Behold, he declared, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. Jude 14 and 15. The power of God that wrought with his servant was felt by those who heard. Some gave heed to the warning and renounced their sins, but the multitudes mocked at the solemn message. The servants of God are to bear a similar message to the world in these last days, and it will also be received with unbelief and mockery. As year after year passed, deeper and deeper grew the tide of human guilt, darker and darker gathered the clouds of divine judgment. Yet Enoch, the witness of faith, held on his way, warning, pleading, and teaching, striving to turn back the tide of guilt and to stay the bolts of vengeance. The men of that generation mocked the folly of him who sought not to gather gold or silver or to build up possessions here. But Enoch's heart was upon eternal treasures. He had looked upon that celestial city. He had seen the king in his glory in the midst of Zion, the greater the existing iniquity, the more earnest was his longing for the home of God. While still on earth, he dwelt by faith in the realms of light. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. For three hundred years Enoch had been seeking purity of heart, that he might be in harmony with heaven. For three centuries he had walked with God, Day by day he had longed for a closer union. Nearer and nearer had grown the communion until God took him to himself. He had stood at the threshold of the eternal world, only a step between him and the land of the blessed. And now the portals opened. The walk with God so long pursued on earth continued, and he passed through the gates of the holy city, the first from among men to enter there. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. See Hebrews 11:5. 5. T. 
to such communion, God is calling us. As was Enoch's, must be their holiness of character who shall be redeemed from among men at the Lord's second coming.